Anyway, I'm Andres. Chef Craig here, Baking Steel Test Kitchen. We're gonna make pizzas today. We're gonna like get right into this. I'm gonna show you what we do, or what I do on a Friday. And we'll get to questions at the end. And we're gonna give something cool away today. So if you're watching this, um, go to our YouTube channel and first hit subscribe, okay? And then comment, just any kind of comment. Make it positive, make it nice. And we're gonna select just a random person and send you something really cool. Um, maybe some swag, maybe some heavy, something heavy. We'll figure it out, but um, subscribe and like this post and comment and we'll uh, make it happen. So getting back, it's Friday night and I'm gonna take you through the routine, what I do to make epic pizza. Um, and move my coffee out of the way. Uh, um, and if, if, so usually for Friday night, I'm getting up you know, around lunchtime, which is about now, I've always got a bucket of dough in my fridge, okay? I just leave this in the fridge. I don't care if it's one day, two day, three day, four day, um, five days, six days even. It's the, this bucket is in my fridge because I'm preparing for Friday night pizza night, okay? So I make this on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, and it's sitting there, and now it's daytime, game time, and I'm going to make my pizza. So I got to prepare a little bit. So Friday, I'm going to remove this about five or six hours um, before I make my pizzas, and I'm going to make my dough balls. And I'm going to make a dough ball here now for you guys. It's really important that the dough, um, we make these balls, but the dough rests and relax for several hours at room temperature. My temperature in here is about 70 degrees, ideal. That's, you know, good room temperature dough. Um, it's got to relax for several hours, otherwise it's not going to stretch. Dough is like our bodies. When it's cold, it's not going to be very supple. So we want to have it relax and get to room temperature. So I'm going to me pre-measure my balls out. I like to keep them kind of consistent. And I, you know, between the 240 and 250 um, gram size. So my knife isn't shutting here. Let's see how I did. I've got my scale. And boom, 270 grams. That's fine. I'm going to use that for today. I'm going to show you how I make a dough ball. So once I get my dough cut out from my um, container, I'm going to make balls. So this dough is sticky, but it's cold, so it's not as sticky as if it was room temperature. Just kind of coat it in the flour, just like this. And now I'm going to pick it up. And I could do this a couple of different ways, but this is the way we choose to do it because it's cool. Okay? Pick it up and just kind of fold it into itself. And if it gets sti stuck at all to your hands, Take some flour and just coat them up. And then I take this dough and I fold it into itself. And then I turn. And I follow the same sequence about 20 times. I press my fingers in lightly and then close it like this. Right? And then I turn again. And what I'm doing is I'm getting this dough more and more taut. It's knocking some of the air out. Right? And I'm going to trap all those gluten strands inside. You can see how tight this is getting. It's almost smooth like a baby's butt, right? Um, as I turn it and close, I do this about 15 or 20 times. I've got this seam side now. that I'll, I'll put the smooth side into my palm and I'll aggressively close the seam. And I've got this really nice dough ball. And now because I've got several hours, I'm going to put this somewhere out of the way. Um, I'm going to co cover it so I, can, I could use a plate. If I'm doing several of these, I might grab a sheet tray or something, something flat. And then I'm going to grab some plastic wrap, right? Just like this. And I'm going to cover this dough kind of loosely but airtight and let this rest for several hours. If I'm using a sheet tray, I'm going to put four or five on there, okay? But again, cover it and let it rest at room temperature four or five hours, okay? And now it's Friday night. Let's fast track about five or six hours. We're going to get right into making pizzas. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do before I get my prep stuff done is I'm going to make sure my steel, my baking steel or pizza stone is in my oven. Um, we're lucky. We have several. We're loaded up on top and bottom shelf. My beautiful monogram oven here. I'm preheating at 450 degrees Fahrenheit 
for at least minimum one hour, okay? Um, as I'm doing that, my dough, I know, is kind of further along. It's relaxed. So I did this this morning. I got my dough ready. Now we're going to fast track to game time. Dough's preheated. I mean, the oven's preheated. Dough's ready to rock and roll. Let's make pizza, okay? Um, I flour up my workstation, okay? I grab my dough, just like this. It's nice and supple now, right? I place it right into the dough. And now what I'm going to do is cover both sides with the flour because I don't want it to stick. And my dough is supple. You can see the bubbles in this. Kind of nice, right? All right. And I'm going to lightly just kind of press the dough out. I can see it. It feels like a cloud. I've never touched a cloud, but if I did, this, would, this is what it would feel like. It'd be a right nice mattress too, by the way contours to your body. Um, and now I'm going to do, after I get a disc, I'm going to work around the perimeter and just let gravity do its thing and just kind of work it and stretch it out. If I, if I turn consistently, it's going to stretch consistently, right? You can see how it's growing as we go, right? And be patient. There's no rush. The dough's, the dough's relaxed. So press and turn, press and turn. And when it gets to be about, you know, nine or 10 inches, I'm almost, I'm almost where I want to be. I might go, if I want to get really puffy, then I'll keep it small. If I want to make it thinner, I'll make it bigger, okay? So um, I don't really have a particular style that I like. Sometimes I like the thicker, more puffy crust, and sometimes I will like it thinner. I might go bigger. Um, so next, when I get my um, dough almost where I want it, grab my pizza peel, Royal, you mean? Yeah, I'll get that. Okay. Um, pizza peel. I lightly dust it with flour. And I use a combination of flour and semolina flour. Those are my ball bearings. Okay. I put this aside. Get back to my dough. Give it a tug, tug and stretch. It's almost where I want it. And I can place it on my peel. Just like so. And before I do cheese, before I do sauce, I'm going to give this a little shake. And this thing should slide like a hockey puck, okay? And be confident. Be confident. Intuitively, I want to know I can slide this dough. And if, as it's doing that, I'm great. Now I might expand it a little bit. I'd like to pinch. If you guys can see what I'm doing here, I like to pinch. And this is, not, this is kind of my thing here. I just pinch it and stretch it a little bit. Just to give the dough and the crust a little uniqueness and um, a little more texture. You can see those bubbles, by the way. Aren't they gorgeous? Unbelievable. Um, so now my dough's stretched and ready. It's loose like a hockey puck. Take a deep breath. I got this. Um, I'm going to go back to my oven. And I'm going to switch it to broil. So my steel's been preheating for an hour. Oven's on broil high if you have that setting. And now I'm going to take my sauce, which is just crushed tomatoes and sea salt. All of these recipes are on our bakingsteel.com site. Um, less is more. I bring my sauce close to the edge, but not over the edge, just like life. Right? So there's my sauce. Boom. Gorgeous. Oh, I spilled a little sauce on my, uh, what do I do, what do I do? I spilled a little sauce on my peel. I'm not going to panic. Take a deep breath and just scrape that off. Because if I don't do that, it might get a little stuck there. Anyway. All right, so there's my sauce. There's my um, pizza. My broiler's on. My cheese now. I'm just going to use my Wonder Shredder. Boom. A little bit of cheese. This is whole milk. Low moisture mozzarella. This is fresh mozzarella. I like to just break apart by hand, adding a little bit in. You can see. And this, this pizza is going to be so good, by the way. I've done this hundreds of times. It never gets old. Um, before I do anything else, I'm going to make sure this dough is going to slide before I go to the oven. I'm going to make sure it's still sliding like a hockey puck. It's beautiful. I'm going to go to my oven, which my broiler now should be on. It is. Back of the peel to the back of the steel. 
and boom. Close it up. Because the broiler's on, and it's Friday night, I've got like, the kids are starving right now, and they're complaining to me. I pointed to the sign, it's positivity day. No complaining. Two minutes, um, and, and cause I've got four kids here. I'm gonna stretch another dough out and make four, two pizzas in a short amount of time. So again, flour my workstation. I'm gonna go through this, this one a little bit faster. Cause again, the kids are screaming, positivity things, but they're screaming. I wanna feed them. So I stretch out my dough quick, boom, right? I basically have two minutes to make this pizza. Timer's on, yes. So I'm trying to make this inside of two minutes so I can, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shuffle those, dough, those pizzas around. So I stretch and turn, kind of boom. Say hi to the kids. Make sure they're happy, right? Um, I can grab another peel if I'd like. Flour it up, semolina flour. Boom. Stretch this one last time, goes on my peel. And see, I'm doing this stuff intuitively. I'm stretching it a little bit, right? It's still loose like a puck. I just do this, I just keep doing that. And now my sauce, which is again, crushed tomatoes and sea salt, boom. Oh, it smells good in here, All right? Once I get my sauce on, back to my cheese, my wonder shredder, boom, cheese it. The kids are getting hungry. They try and get into the ice cream. That was low moisture moths, now I'm fresh moths, boom, boom. I got about 30 seconds left. Um, so we, we made the time, because I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. At two minutes, um, I am going to take my other peel, okay? I got a second peel, because I'm making two pizzas. These are great to slice on too. I can slice my pizza on here, I can serve it on these peels. So get, in other words, get a lot of them. Um, I'm gonna show you this pizza now. It's been two minutes. Let's open it up. Boom. It's gorgeous. It's got some great bubbles on it. You can see that. I don't know if you can see that color. It's incredible. I'm gonna take this pizza off the top steel and move it to the bottom steel, okay? And I'm gonna take my other pizza, give it one last little shake, I'm gonna launch this on the top steel, but first I'm gonna dust it off, boom, and relaunch, boom. Now I've got two pizzas in the oven. Conveniently, two more minutes with my timer. Um, after two minutes, I'm gonna remove the, um, the bottom steel and bring it to the finishing station, which is where I'll get to next, and we're gonna finish the pizza off and I'll move the pizza that's on the top steel onto the bottom steel um, and let that cook for two more minutes. And if I was really, if I had a lot of kids here, I'd be making a third pizza, getting that really ready right now so I could launch that when I remove the next. So in other words, you can see this sequence of every two minutes, I'm getting a new pizza out of the oven, which is incredibly fast um, and efficient for pizza making on a Friday night. So I could feed, um, easily, like multiple, like 10 kids at one time. Um, I would just be feeding them every two minutes. I'm basically getting another pizza out, okay? And we got about a minute left, and the phone's ringing. Uh, let's talk about my finishing station. And that means when my pizza comes out, I bring it over here on my peel, and I can work some magic, depending on the style that I'm making. And we kept things really simple today, where we're just doing, I use a little Parmesan Reggiano, a little secret ingredient here. Um, fresh basil, right? You can smell that. And I'm using a really nice olive oil. This is um, from, I think this is, where's this from? Turkey. Turkey, I think, right? And it's a, someone sent this to me from HIC. Um, it's just a beautiful tasting olive oil and I might drizzle just a little bit on top of the basil when it comes out of the oven really hot, and it's really incredible. We'll do that together in just a second. Um, so I've got 10 seconds left. So my first pizza will be just under four minutes. Let's take a look at it. So boom. Oh yeah, it looks great, huh? It's good, cooked nicely. Like that, Chef? I'll put this here. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go to my other pizza which has got some really nice color on it. 
Um, not super dark. My boiler may have shut itself off. I'm gonna still, I'm gonna move this down to the bottom steel. Boom. Now that I can take a little break, I'm gonna turn my broiler off. Put my oven setting back to 500 on convection because we're gonna feed the kids with these two pizzas and we're gonna take a break. The adults will enjoy a beverage and get to making more pizzas in a little bit. But for now, let's finish off this for the kids. And I don't know about your kids, but my kids love cheese. And this dough, by the way, which is cooked beautifully underneath, uh, it smells incredible, right? Doesn't that smell great? A little bit of palm rage, just like this, boom. Gorgeous. And now some basil. Again, you could chop this up. You could do whatever you like. I just like to break it off. Throw it on top. Man, it looks good, huh? Chef, what do you think? More basil? All right, more basil? We'll get more basil. Boom. And now, maybe a little bit of olive oil. Just a little drizzle. And I would typically slice this up and feed the kids and would be off to the races. Um, and I never put the timer back. Let me put the timer on for another minute. We're good there. Pizzas are done. Gorgeous. So nice. Smells incredible. I can take a deep breath now. That's what I do on Friday night.